to show us all the way, to show us all the way. We glorify your name, Jesus. Lord, I lift your name on high. Lord, we love to sing your praises. And we will continually sing your praises. We will continually shout for joy for what you've done for us. Amen.
lift up your voice. Lord, I lift your name.
microphone and talk a lot but I'm just going to end it here what I will say to you that God has a word for you so be expectant and your life will never ever be the same help me welcome the choir as they do that special song and after that we'll hear the word of the Lord hallelujah church in this Easter season we're just asking God to just revive us again for his spirit to just break out in this church, in this nation. Amen. Amen.
revival. We are in revival. This is revival. It's the year of spiritual awakening. We are in revival. This is revival. We ask for more rain. Yeah, we need a revival, but we're also in revival. I'm reminded of the scripture. The Bible tells us there was a man that been at the pool for 38 years. And when Jesus had an encounter with Jesus, he said, I don't have anybody to put me in. But as Jesus was there, he gave him the command. He said, take your mat and walk. We are in revival. This is not the time to say, I don't have anybody. The waters have been stirred. We, the waters are stirred. But we, I need us to have to understand that we are in revival. So it's not a time to say that, oh, I don't have anybody. This is revival. This is spiritual awakening. And part of this revival, the Lord has set you and I up. You know, every time you hear the word set up, you, what comes after it is a fall. That person's been set up for a fall. But you know what our God does? He sets us up for a promotion. In other words, he orchestrates things. And I always love the story of Esther. The Bible tells us of the story of Esther that I never noticed that I picked up one day. That's why it's good to read your Bible over and over again. That it said that, and Esther was also taken. That means it was against her will. She was kidnapped. And all the circumstances, she didn't realize that she was being set up by God for a promotion, for deliverance. Today, you and I, we've been set up. The Lord has brought us in this revival time for now. And anytime there's revival, the Lord will choose a particular people, group of people. And you choose today. We have a great man of God all the way from Barbados. It is not coincidental. And he comes to speak a word of God. Some of you may have met him before and experienced his ministry. He's been here before with his wife, Pastor Sandra. So prophetic, a sharpness. And today I want to encourage everybody. Let's speak King James English. I beseech you <laughs> by the mercies of God. Open your heart and receive the ministry of the man of God today. The word is not from him, but it's from God. Understand we have an electronic introduction. So let us hear it. And then... speaker is a profound teacher and preacher of the word of God. His message is that of deliverance, restoration, reformation and empowering people to fulfill their potential and God-given purpose. He has been in full-time pastoral ministry for over 35 years and was consecrated and set apart as an apostle of the Lord Jesus by a presbytery of apostles in 2005. Since then, he has been offering spiritual mentorship to several pastors and has direct apostolic supervision of 11 churches. He is the founder of Kingdom International Network, an apostolic network based in Barbados which gives apostolic covering to churches and ministries in various nations. He is also regional director over the Caribbean for Kingdom Global Alliance Network, an apostolic network based in Nassau, Bahamas. He travels to various countries ministering in conferences and crusades and his journeys have taken him to several islands of the Caribbean as well as the USA, Canada, South America and various parts of Africa. Apostle Stephen Holford holds a Doctorate of Divinity degree from St. Thomas Christian University, Jacksonville, Florida, USA and he serves in ministry with his beautiful wife, Pastor Sandra. Ladies and gentlemen, let us welcome our speaker for Freedom Centre International Welling Easter Convention 2024, Apostle Stephen Holford, Senior Pastor of New Dimensions Ministries in Barbados. And SCI, welcome! Bless. Hallelujah. Amen. Thank you. So well, it was a joy to be here again with you. It's been a few years uh, since we've been here. As I said, last time I was here with my wife, and uh, she's taking care of things back home. 
and I, I believe she's online ten, tonight, um, along with some members, members of New Dimensions. But you may be seated, please. Thank you so much, choir, tremendous ministry. I thank God for his goodness. And I thank God for uh, two friends of mine, uh, your lovely pastors, uh, really enjoy their fellowship. I want to thank you for inviting me here. I know you had other choices and you took the risk in me. <laughs> uh, I pray that I wouldn't disappoint. Um, one of our, our young men from the church, he's a businessman also, um, leader of our deliverance ministry. He uh, used to live in England for a few years and he said, decided he wants to come along the trip. So he said, don't worry, I'll pay more fear, I'll do everything just to be here. So uh, Romano Blandman, he is, he's back home. <laughs> and um, thank God that he's here. Well, I want to, I want to go into the word of the Lord. And um, I realized the theme. Can I get, ah, uh, here we go. You have a very interesting theme, uh, spiritual awakening. And um, when, when um, I was given that theme, my eyes lit up. Think it's back on? Okay, we're going to use this. Good. Spiritual awakening. So I just want to turn your attention, please, to your theme scripture, Ephesians chapter 5 and verse 14. And uh, as you turn to Ephesians 5, 14, I want to bring greetings uh, from my wife, um, Apostle, Pastor, Apostle Pastor Sandra uh, Holford and all those from New Dimensions. Uh, we bring greetings and love to each and every one of you. So I'm speaking on the subject, we need an awakening. Apostle Paul writing to the Ephesians in chapter 5 and verse 14 says, Therefore, he says, Awake you who sleep. Arise from the dead and Christ will give you light. Often in scripture, believers are exhorted to awake. They are warned of the dangers of spiritual sleep, that such a state will result in death. In Isaiah chapter 60 verse 1, the prophet charged the people, awake or arise, shine, for your light has come. And the glory of the Lord is risen upon you. Amos rebuked the laid back Israelites of his day and said, Woe to them who are at ease in Zion. Even in the New Testament, the same call was made for the church to awake. Apostle Paul constantly exhorted the churches to awake from their sleep. He told the Romans, uh, church, the Roman church, the hour has come for you to wake up from your slumber because our salvation is nearer now than when we first believed. Romans chapter 13 and verse 11. Paul charged the Corinthians to awake unto righteousness and warned the Thessalonians not, <coughs> I'm sorry, not to be like others who are asleep but be alert. And then in my text in Ephesians chapter uh, 5 and verse 14, he tells the Ephesians to wake up, you who sleep. Arise from the dead and Christ will give you light. All these scriptural references tell us one thing, that it's possible for a true believer of Jesus Christ to fall asleep or to be in a state of slumber, saved but asleep. And when this state falls upon God's people, they become insensitive to his leading. 
They can become callous. And the Christian life is at a standstill. It is therefore time to wake up from our sleep. Because there's work to do. And there are things that God wants to do through his people. So what Apostle Paul quoted in chapter 5 of Ephesians and verse 14 is either a poem or a hymn based on Isaiah chapter 60 verse 1 which says, Arise, shine, for your light has come. Others believe it's an actual paraphrasing of Isaiah chapter 60 verse 1. And both arguments are plausible. In my text, Paul says, Wake up, you who sleep. Arise from the dead and Christ will give you light. Let me first work some, use some working definitions to help you, to help bring clarity as I extract some truths from this text in Ephesians 5 verse 14. There are two, two things I want to mention here. The first one is sleep, giving a definition to this. Sleep is a state of spiritual slumber or inactivity. It doesn't mean inactivity as not being involved in church, but it means inactivity not growing in Christ. The word sleep is also used metaphorically of spiritual dullness, lethargy. So those who are asleep may be saved, but they but they do not spur, they're not spiritually aware. There's not spiritually, there's not that spiritual sharpness. That is, they may possess, they may, they may be saved, but they don't process spiritual things. They may be once going, go, they may be once in the Lord, working strong and fervent about the things of God, but then things happen. And they've graduated or downgraded to a place of spiritual slumber. When you are asleep spiritually, you are in darkness and therefore you can't see. You have lost in sight and foresight and you may not understand deep spiritual truths. When you are asleep, discernment is lacking. You hardly pray if you pray at all. And you're not connected spiritually as you used to be. You're saved, but your life is not fully connected to Christ. When you are asleep spiritually, there's no spiritual growth or development. And your Christian life is at a standstill. Apathy sets in, and your spiritual senses become dull. Like what Paul speaks of the natural man in first Corinthians chapter 2 verse 14 when he says the natural man cannot receive the things of the spirit of God such a state is very serious for the believer and the thing is such is the state of many in the church of Jesus Christ today they could be they could be there could be thriving church services but yet people are asleep spiritually. We could be busy with a lot of activity, but there's no productivity. Therefore, as believers, we are called to be fruitful and productive, not stagnant and unproductive. Spiritual slumber can come from, from, uh, because of several reasons, including unbelief, not reading the word, Constant sin, bitterness, hurt, offense, not praying, and we can go on and on. Sleep. And that's why Paul said, awake from your sleep. Because sleep is not the natural state of a believer. The second term he used was dead. The Greek word here used for dead does not mean a cessation of life, but inactivity powerlessness. It pertains to being unable to respond. So when I speak about being dead, I'm not referring to being spiritually dead as being unsaved, but to spiritually ineffective. To having a form of godliness, but denying the power of godliness. I'm speaking about when 
Religion has overtaken us that we don't hear the voice of God like we used to. And therefore we don't receive direction from him. And the church at Sardis in the book of Revelation was like this. The Bible says in Revelation chapter 3 verse 1 to 3. As Jesus spoke to the church. He said to the church in Sardis write. These things says he who has the seven spirits of God and the seven stars. I know your words. That you have a name that you are alive but you are dead. Be watchful. And strengthen the things which remain that are ready to die. For I have not found your works perfect before God. Remember therefore how you have received and heard. Hold fast and repent. Therefore if you, if you do not watch, I will come upon you as a thief. And you will not know what hour I am coming upon you. The word watch in this in this text means to wake up and be alert. Do we have a name that suggests freedom but are in bondage? Do we have a name that suggests life but are dead? Then we need to wake up. You see, the essence of any church is not in its programs. It's not in its buildings. It's not in past achievements, reputation, or institutional greatness, but the quality of our spiritual life. And this life comes only through relationship with our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, and it's demonstrated in the way we live. It is so easy to slide into spiritual deadness while thinking you're spiritually alive. And this is why we must guard against the things that cause death. God's original plan was to have fellowship with man. And his plan was always to have a people for himself. A people that looks like him, functions like him, speaks like him, so that they can represent him in the earth. Adam and Eve then were made in God's image and likeness. One speaks, of, one speaks of looking like God and the other speaks of representing him. So this is important and it was important for them that they, be, that they look like God and to have dominion in the earth. Therefore when it was time to name the animals God didn't say, that's elephant, that's a dog. Oh, you see that over there? That's a leopard. No, when it was time to name the animals, God called Adam and sat him down. And the Bible said, whatever Adam called them, it was so. Why? God was training Adam. He was training him to function like God himself. So that when we decree on earth, there's a backing up in heaven. Another aspect of shaping Adam's identity is the relationship he had with God. So his identity was in God and that identity was shaped through relationship with God. So every day they would have fellowship together. Then the devil tempted Eve to sin and Adam also ate of the forbidden tree and the image of God and the relationship with him was tarnished. And since then, God initiated relationship with different men. It was always God who was initiating the relationship. It was always God who was coming after man to draw man to himself. And God initiated relationship with men to stamp his image upon them and that they may represent him in the earth with power and authority. It was always God's intention to have close relationship with man, to reveal his heart to man so that man can function in his image and likeness. So that, that's why it was no problem for him to initiate the bond. So he called Adam, he called Abraham, he called Jacob, men like Moses and Samuel, David 
and I can go on and on. It was God who initiated the relationship because he always wanted a people in the earth to look like him and function like him. Then God did it through Jesus Christ who came in the full image and likeness of God. And that's why Jesus spent three years with the, with the disciples sharing the Father's heart, revealing the mysteries of the kingdom and showing them how to live for God. I like how Mark, Mark's gospel puts it. It says that Jesus appointed 12 apostles that they may be with him, relationship, and that he may send them out for him, representation. That's always God, to be with him, to have relationship with him so that the image of God will be formed in us so that when he sends us out for him, we represent him and we look like him, we speak like him. There's creativity in our words as we decree because we're representatives of God in the earth. So that's why Paul said to the church at Ephesus, Wake up, you who are sleeping. Arise from the dead. Because it's the devil's assignment to put us in a state of spiritual sleep where we, don't, where we no longer look like God. To put us in a place of, of spiritual deadness, if I can use that term. So we don't function like God. He's happy if we can come to church and be involved in church and be in all the activity. But if he can get us asleep, get us not functioning as we should, he's a happy devil. But there's a call, there's a call from the beginning of this year. Awake, awake, who you sleep, awake, arise from the dead. There's image to be formed in you. There's the image and likeness of God to be formed in you. You're no use to God asleep and dead. We were created in Christ not to be sleeping spiritually, not to be ineffective, not to be living in sin, but to grow in him and to grow in character. We were created in Christ to become like him. Ephesians chapter 5 verse 1 to 7, in this passage of scripture, Paul warned the church not to be involved in the unfruitful works of darkness. And he mentions some of them, sexual immorality, impurity, greed, foolish talk, coarse joking. These are all unfruitful because they do not add to our spiritual development. In fact, they cause decay. Then in verse 8 to 11, he reminds the Ephesians that they were once in darkness, but now they're in light, in, in light, or they are light in the Lord. And he said, live as children of the light. You see, children of the light should live, should not live like children of the darkness. They should not be involved in or partic participate in sin and unfruitful works of darkness. Children of the light should be different from children of the darkness. And that's why Paul challenged the Ephesians, wake up. Do not go back in that place how you were. Asleep, dead, ineffective. So Paul admonished them not to have fellowship with the unfruitful work of darkness. Unfortunately, today's church has been distracted by what I call a thirst for material things and the desire for prosperity. And even though these things are good, and I preach on these things, we can set our attention more on them than on God. And we can think because we have them that we are blessed. When the true test of a Christian's blessing is in his spiritual walk and not in material things. Now, please, please understand, God wants to bless you not only spiritually, he also wants to bless you materially. But where God is concerned, it is out of our spiritual walk that he blesses us with material things. 
And nowadays the church has turned it upside down. All we, we go after it are the material things and we lose out on the relationship with God. Many of us have gone cold in our relationship with the Lord, enjoying the pleasures of sin and not even feeling guilty about them. Generally speaking, the church has been having fellowship with the unfruitful works of darkness. Behaving like darkness. And it has become easy for us to live in sin and still be at church involved in worship. Or functioning in church activities. Our spiritual lives could be shaky. But we behave as though we are strong in the Lord. But there's a clear and strong call from the Spirit of the Lord for us to wake up and for us to rise. The Lord wants to, to, wants to, to awake us spiritually. He wants an, a, a spiritual awakening to take place in this ministry so that he can do all he wants to do in us. There are powerful things that God wants to do in your life. There's a glory he wants to bring upon you. He wants to talk with you. He wants to fellowship with you. He wants to pour his spirit upon you. He wants to reveal himself to you. But if we are asleep, we can very well miss a move of God. Therefore, it's time to awake. In the text in Ephesians chapter 4, Ephesians chapter 5, I'm sorry, In the text in Ephesians chapter 5 and verse 14, it provides two steps of a spiritual awakening as I extracted these from this text. The first thing Paul says is to awake. If we're to have a spiritual awakening, the church must awake. Awake from our sleep. Awake is from the Greek word meaning to wake up, to be aware, to be conscious. If the church is to experience a spiritual awakening, then we must first awake. We must become aware that we have been in a place that God did not design for us. A place outside of his will. A place of slumber, being spiritually lethargic and stagnant. This is a call for those who have been having what I call fellowship with the unfruitful works of darkness. It's a call for us to wake up. Wake up those who sleep. It's, it, it amazes me that in Barbados, a pandemic like COVID has caused many Christians to go to sleep. England may be different. It has caused many to go to sleep or it has revealed how many were already sleeping. So now the doors of the church are open. The hearts of many are still closed. And it's like we have to evangelize the saved. <laughs> we have to call them back to where they belong. As I said to, as I said to New Dimensions, and the thing about it, COVID was not a tribulation. If, if something like COVID could do what it did to the church, not that it was the intent of COVID, but in the midst of that, the devil was able to get hold of some, some of us as believers. If this can cause many to fall away or to stop coming to church, I'm not even talking about those who are online. I'm talking about those who have fallen away, who have gone cold, who are disinterested in the things of God. If COVID can do that, what about when the tribulation comes? In the midst 
midst of COVID, there was a ploy from the devil to neutralize the church and to make us powerless. And when we sleep, we are alive, but we are not aware of how affected we are by our association with sin and the world. I want you to hear again what, what Christ said to the church at Sardis. I want to read it again. Let me read it from the New International Version of the Bible. It says to the church at Sardis, I'll read some of it. These are the words of him who, of him who holds the, 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 the seven spirits of God and the seven stars. I know your deeds, that you have a reputation of being alive, but you are dead. Wake up. Strengthen what remains and what is about to die. For I have found your deeds unfinished in the sight of God. Remember, therefore, what you have received and heard. Hold it fast and repent. But if you do not wake up, I will come like a thief and you would not know what time I will come to you. And Jesus is saying the same thing to every believer. Wake up. To every believer that's asleep, wake up. We will not have a genuine spiritual awakening unless we wake up. And it's two times in this message to the church at Sardis that Jesus said, wake up. And it's, a, it's clearly linked to their deeds. They went to sleep because of the wrong they were involved in. Twice in the passage, Jesus speaks about the deeds of the church. You see, to the outsider, a church may look awake, full of activities and programs, with many people attending on Sunday mornings. But are we truly awake, or are we sleepwalking? A sleeping Christian, then, is one that is habitually doing things that are not pleasing to God. They may be involved in church activity, but they are not fully connected to Christ. They may be singing in a choir, teaching children in children's church, ushering, but they're not growing in the things of God and their lives are at a standstill. They're not praying as they used to, if at all. Awake, you who sleep. Arise from the dead and Christ will give you light. Wake up from your apathy. Wake up from your callousness. Wake up from your lack of prayer. God today is shaking his church and he's saying to us that we must awake. We must awake out of our sleep and repent of our wrongdoings. Apostle Paul said to the church at Rome, at Rome and, do you not, and don't you know that the time, it's now high time for us to wake out of our sleep? For now your salvation is nearer than when we first believed. The night is far spent. The day is at hand. Therefore let us cast off the works of darkness and let us put on the arm of light. Let us walk properly as in the day, not in revelry, not in drunkenness, not in lewdness and lust, not in strife and envy, but put on the Lord Jesus Christ and make no provision for the flesh to fulfill its lust. Away. The first step into a spiritual renewal is to awake. Second step is to arise. Arise from the dead. Arise here in the Greek means to stand up. It's therefore not enough to wake up. A rising is necessary. You see, you can be awake and remain lying in bed. And yet you have not risen up. When I was a teenager, like many of us, we like to sleep in late. In the morning, one of my parents, my mom and dad, would come to the bedroom door and say, Stephen, get up. And I would say, I'm up, I'm up. And they would say, you're not up because you're still lying down. If you were up, you'll be out. And the same is true. 
Many of us are aware that we're not where we should be, but we haven't done anything about it. Many are aware that we're sleeping, but we have not moved yet to the next step where we get up. Because waking up is not getting up. Getting up involves a different set of energy. Arising is different. When you are awake, you open your eyes. And when you are awake, you come to the realization that you were asleep. So those who are waking up, wake up to the realization that they were asleep. But you see, we can remain lying down and never move to the next step. And if we want a spiritual renewal, it calls for a waking up, but it also calls for an arising. To arise means to stand up. To stand up means to shift positions. And if we want a spiritual awakening, we've got to, we got to wake up and we've got to shift. We've got to shift. You see... Dead believers don't necessarily stop away, um, attending church. Nor do they stop being involved in, in, in ministry in the church. You can sing really well and still be dead. Because when I speak of deadness, I'm not talking about dead spiritually. I'm talking about a spiritual state of deadness. You could be the best greet out the door and still be dead. You can greet with the widest smile but still be dead. A spiritual state. You can be a member of a living, thriving church like this one and still be dead. You could be lively, busy socially, yet corpse light spiritually. Again, in the book of Revelation, the church at Sardis was described as having a reputation of being alive but yet they were dead. So a dead believer is not determined by his or her activity or involvement in the church. It's determined by their spiritual growth and development, by their prayer life, by their relationship with the Lord. So I say to every sleeping believer, every sleeping Christian, every Christian in a dead state, wake up and arise in the name of Jesus. As I said a few moments ago, you can remain lying down and awake, but still haven't arisen, haven't shifted. Therefore, arise means to shift position. It's a shifting from resting into action. It's a shifting from darkness into light. It's a shifting from apathy into passion. I declare in the name of Jesus, it's time to arise. It's time to shift. Can somebody say shift? shift? Arise from your indifference and shift to enthusiasm. Arise from negative mindsets and shift to having the mind of Christ. Arise from prayerlessness and shift to fervent prayer. Arise from religion and shift to a powerful relationship with God. Arise from apathy and shift to passion. Arise from sin and shift into repentance. Arise from powerlessness and shift to Holy Spirit power. Arise from effectiveness and shift to fruitfulness. Arise. Arise in the name of Jesus. This is not time to be dead. It's not time for us to be going through the motions of Christianity. This is time for action. This is time to serve God fervently. So I speak life to every dead thing in this place in the name of Jesus. I speak life in the name of Jesus. Oh, we need a spiritual awakening. Oh, God, come and breathe life. Breathe life. Breathe life. We need, a, we need Holy Spirit to truly break out in this place and break in upon us. A kind of spiritual awakening where the Spirit of God breaks sin upon us that produces sorrow over sin and repentance and turning our backs from sin. Spiritual awakening for the believer is like a light being turned on in a dark room. Spiritual awakening is turning our backs on everything that's ungodly. 
and walking away from them forever. Hallelujah. Whether, they're, whether you're blatantly sinning or they're hidden, unhealthy thought patterns, it's a turning away from these things. Arise. Wake up and shift position. Wake up from your sleep and shift into a new realm where Christ now can give you light. Here's the third aspect of any spiritual renewal. There's a responsibility for the church. We have to awake. We have to shift. We have to arise. And then Christ responds. And he gives light. You see, there's always a divine response to anyone who wakes up from their sleep and arises from the dead. When you wake up, when you arise, then Christ responds with light. Therefore, if you wake up and do not arise, then Christ cannot act on your behalf. If you come into the awareness that you are not where you should be in God and you don't shift, then heaven cannot respond to you. Hey, but if you wake up and you get up and shift, Christ will encounter you with great things. And Christ will do good things in your life. When Christ encounters you, it's a shifting that you can't do on your own. You see, when the children of Israel, when they were about to cross the Jordan, they were instructed to sanctify themselves. And they obeyed. They sanctify themselves and they cross over successfully. And then God says, said to them after they crossed over, today I have rolled away the reproach of Egypt from you. Israel did what they were told to do. They sanctified themselves. They obeyed and crossed over and then heaven responded. And God did what they could not do for themselves. Let me explain this some more. You see, all through the wilderness journey, the reproach of Egypt was upon Israel. They were free, but with a slave mentality. And as a result, that led them into rebelling against God and on several occasions. But when they arose from the camp under, under Joshua, and they sanctified themselves and followed the ark and the priest and crossed over the Jordan, then God dealt with what troubled them all their lives. When you do what is required, wake up and arise, Christ will encounter you right where you are and do for you what you're unable to do for yourself. That's the spiritual awakening. Waking up and arising is necessary. But the spiritual renewal comes in response to our step of faith to awake and arise. There's no church that didn't awake and arise and press in for more that God did not respond to them. And I'm saying to you, in your quest for spiritual renewal, when you awake, and you arise, Christ will respond. You will have a spiritual renewal. The Bible says Christ will give you light. This word light in Greek means illumination, enlightenment. But, but let me develop this a little more. Because when I began to look at it, Begin to understand why Christ gives light. When you are in a state of sleep, it means that you're, do, you're not doing what pleases God. In other words, your Christian life is not where it should be. Therefore, spiritual darkness is around and is closing in on us and we are not aware of it. Then darkness creeps in and gradually we're in a spiritual state where our eyes, spiritual eyes, adjust to the conditions 
and we are in spiritual slumber, but yet not aware of it. When we're in a state of spiritual death, we become apathetic, we become cold to the things of God. So when we wake up and arise, Christ gives light. And it brightens our spiritual atmosphere and brings fresh life. It's amazing that Paul showed that the first thing Christ does in a spiritual awakening is to give light. And light opens the door to all that God wants to do in us. Before God created this earth, before God did anything creative, what was the first thing he said? Let there be light. Before he bring the world, brought the world into order, caused vegetation to come forth, caused animals to be there, before he did anything, he spoke a word, let there be light. Before he brought an awakening of swords in the earth, He declared, let there be light. And that light was not the sun and the moon. Because they were created on the fourth day. So it seems to me that when God is about to do something powerful, when he's about to do something new, when he's about to breathe life and create within the church something we've never had, he brings light. Paul says, wake up, shift. And Christ, the first thing he does, light. And when he brings light, he brings all of heaven with him. And he brings the, creativ the creativity that the church needs in order to make it. He brings the power that the church needs in order to go to the next level. You see, when Christ gives light, illumination comes. You begin to grasp spiritual truths that you weren't grasping before. And the Lord is able to reveal the depths of the word to you. Then the revealed word you receive becomes life and power to you and brings a further knowledge of God. That's why Apostle Paul said in Ephesians, same book of Ephesians, chapter 1 and verse 17, I ask that, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, the glorious Father, will give to you the spirit of wisdom and revelation that you may know him better. The spirit of wisdom and revelation. Because when light comes, the knowledge of God is possible. Paul said, I pray for wisdom. I pray that God will reveal himself to you so you will know him better. Secondly, when Christ gives light, understanding comes. Paul continues in his prayer in, first, in Ephesians chapter 1, verse 18 to 19. He says, I pray that the eyes of your understanding will be what? Enlightened in order to know the hope for which he's called you to, the riches of his glorious inheritance in his holy people and his incomparably great power to us who believe. When light comes, he, we are able to see, we begin to understand our true purpose in the earth. Then we live to glorify God and not ourselves. In Psalm 119 verse 30, the Bible says, at the entrance of your word gives light. It gives understanding to the simple. That word simple means showing lack of wisdom and understanding. When we are asleep, we don't understand as we should. We don't read the word as we should. Wisdom and understanding then are lacking in us. But when there is an awakening and Christ gives light, then understanding comes. Understanding of the word comes. There is a wisdom and an understanding that's revealed to us by the light of Christ. Also, when light comes, direction for our lives will come. Psalm 119 verse 1 and 5 says, Your word is a lamp to my feet and a light to my path. 
The word of God is light. The word of God gives direction. And that light directs our paths. We don't go where we want to go. We go where the light leads us. The issue is when we stop reading the word, our lives go into a state of laziness and, and, and the sleeping process begins. We stop praying like we used to and we are no longer diligent in reading the word. We are no longer pursuing the things of God and we stop going after God with our hearts. And then dryness sets in and coldness begins to come upon us. Apathy sets in and we're just there going through the motions of Christianity, not growing or advancing in the walk of God. But when light comes, there is direction. We, are, we know where we're going now. We're not just going aimlessly in the dark. Light shows the way. But fourthly, when light comes, life comes. You see, Jesus is not only light, he's also life. John 1 and verse 4 says, In him is life, and the life is the light of men. Let me tell you, more than ever we need life. The church needs life. The church needs fresh life. So much has happened to snuff the life of Christ out of us. Trials happened, COVID happened, and, and many still seem lost and, 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 and void of life. In Barbados, people have returned to work, returned to supermarkets, returned to stores, returned to traveling, but somehow can't return to church. Their very lifeline. The very thing that can allow the identity of Christ to be in them. Many are not returning to. God's people really need an infusion of life. And that life is available in the light of Christ. Anytime there's an awakening, there's fresh life. Arise. And Christ will respond with light. And finally, when Christ gives light, his glory comes. Every awakening there has been has some measure of the glory of God with it. God's glory is light. Even on the day of Pentecost, when the Spirit of God was poured out in the upper room, the Bible says there was light, towns of fire, came and stood over every one of them. Today the Lord is saying that he wants his glory to be in freedom center. Amen, Amen to that. I, I stand in agreement with that. God does not just want to visit you. He wants this place to be a habitation of the spirit of God. He wants to do powerful things in your midst. He wants to breathe fresh life. He wants his glory to flow. That's why he's saying, arise, shine. For the glory of the Lord is risen upon you. And when the glory comes, healings will flow. Miracles will flow. Spiritual experiences will take place. Outpourings of the Spirit will happen. We need a spiritual awakening. There's no doubt about that. Many in the church have fallen asleep. Some are waking up. Some woke up but can't move. There needs to be a return of spiritual hunger in the church. A longing for the things of God. A passion for the presence of God. An enthusiasm about serving God. Wake up you who sleep. Arise from the dead and Christ will give you light. And when that light shines on you, change will come. Joy will flow. Passion will return. I speak to everyone who's asleep and say wake up. I speak to everything that's dead and I say, arise, Christ will give you light. And when Christ gives you light, he will create a hunger within you for more of God. A hunger for God that will bring a revival. One of the problems we face in society is that we're filled with all sorts of, society is filled with all sorts of things that compete for our attention, for our interest, for our affection. 
taking away our time from God. But when a renewal comes, there's a shifting even in our priorities. We put God first again. He takes center stage in our lives and not the things of the world. There's a prioritizing even of our times of prayer. We begin to see that if we seek God first and his kingdom, the things that we are praying for over and over again would just be added without us praying. I've learned the secret, brother. If I want blessings from God, it's not him just praying for them. It's going after him. Oh, Lord. I think that went over some of your heads. So I've come to a place in my walk with God where I don't pray for things anymore. The focus of my prayer is, God, I want more of you. God, fill my life with your glory. Pour your spirit upon me. Lord, do a work in me that's beyond me. God, I can't make it throughout this day or even the next day without you. Direct my life. It's not about, God, I need a new car. God, I need a new home. God, I need money. All of those things are already in God laid up for me. But if I seek him, he has them. And I've seen God adding to my life without me praying for them. Because I put him first. Because inside of me there's this passion for more of God. I want to see God moving. I just don't want to read about it in the Bible. I just don't want to read what Peter did, what Paul did, what happened in the early church. There's a present day church right now that God wants to move in. There's a church today that needs a revival. There needs to be fresh life. There needs to be the breath of God. You see... The early church was supposed to be the baby church. And we, the adult church. And if all of that happened in the babies, what happened to the adults? We're the ones that have to be welcoming back Jesus. We can't welcome him back in this state. That's why we need to rise. That's why we need to wake up. That's why we need the light. That's why we need a fresh wind of the spirit. That's why we need a, a, an infusion of life. We can't be bothered anymore with the things of the world. We can't be distracted any longer by just, by just things that will last for a while and decay. We want something that's eternal because that's going to matter in our lives. God is bringing the church back to a place where the image of God is stamped upon us. Where we look like God. Where we represent God. Where we speak like God. And things come into being. It's going to happen in a revival. It's going to happen in a reawakening. I prophesy over Freedom Center, a revival is coming. I prophesy over you that those who are waking, those who are rising, are about to get an infusion of life from the light of the Spirit. Hallelujah. There's something about to open up to you. I see in the spirit, the windows of heaven. No, the entire heavens are open to you. And God says, what you are doing and what you are crying out for will not go unnoticed. I'm about to pour my spirit. I'm about to pour my spirit. I'm about to breathe fresh life in this place. But you will know that I am God. Hallelujah. So the Lord is saying, awake, arise. He wants to invade your life with his presence. A spiritual awakening is coming. I, I felt this thing as I was praying before I left Barbados. This is not just an Easter conference where you're meeting and you go back home. God's going to shake you. He's going to disturb you. He's going to disturb your comfort zone. He's going to, he's going to confuse your life. <laughs> I can sense the Holy Spirit saying, I'm coming and take over Freedom Center. The Lord is saying, you don't know what you're praying for. If you can just get a glimpse of what God is about to do in this place, 
God, that's why God is calling you back into relationship. That's why he's saying, I want to bring you into alignment with my image, with my plans and my purposes, so you can be like me and you can represent me in the earth. God is calling you back to, from out of spiritual sleep into an awakening. Hallelujah. God is saying, awake. And God is saying, arise. And this is what the Lord said, and, and I wrote it down. And I want to say as I heard it. A spiritual awakening is coming to Freedom Center. And a point of great proportion that produces tremendous miracles and healings. A revival that will bring many into the kingdom. It's a revival of holiness, yet it's a revival of deliverance, yet it's a revival with healings and miracles. The Lord said there are outpourings, there were outpourings and revivals before in this nation. But the glory that will come upon you will be different and greater, says the Lord. There's going to be a wave, a wave of God's glory that we will be more glorious and more powerful than those that went on in the past. And you will be stewards of a new move of God's glory that will bring many healings and miracles, signs and wonders and thousands to the Lord. Every time God's people have dared to wake up, arise and pursue a deep relationship with him, to seek him in prayer and fasting, powerful and miraculous things took place. And it's going to happen in this place. And God said one more thing, this awakening that's coming will make it easy for you to accomplish things because what took you 10 years in the past to accomplish will now take two. What took a year to accomplish will take a month. What took a month would take mere hours to accomplish because of the life I'm going to breathe upon you. Some of you were striving and working to make things happen. When my glory comes, says God, when the light of my glory shines, things become easy. Because this is a difference between the anointing and the glory. When the anointing comes, you sweat. You got tired. You pray. Things will happen. Because it's when my glory comes, I make things happen easy. And what you strove to do in the past, God says, I will now make happen. Apostle God says, the things you've been praying for and crying out for concerning this ministry are now about to come to pass. And the Lord says he's, he's brought you to a point because the awakening has taken place in both of you. And there are dimensions of it that will take place in the future. But God says, I'm bringing you to a place and I dare say you are at that point where you will stand before me and you, whatever you ask for will be given. The Lord says the years of your striving, the years of your disappointments, the years of your frustration are over. Amen. This is a new day, says the Lord. Amen. And the Lord says, that's it. But he's calling us to a renewal, an awakening. Awake you who sleep. Arise from the dead. And Christ will give you light. Can you stand with me, please? Thank you, Jesus. here in this service in the next couple minutes in 
you know that you need an infusion of the life of God, I want you to come forward and we're going to cry out to God together. We're going to cry out to him, oh God, do something in me. Oh God, break every bondage. Even if you're in the choir, you need this come from. I prefer you to be here than to sing. Even if you're greeted at the door, come. Hallelujah. Jesus. I know you know how to pray. So we're going to pray together. As I pray and you pray, the church prays along with you. Ask God to break in upon you. Ask the Spirit of God to break in on your circumstance, in your life, on your situation, and breathe life upon you. Let's pray together. Even those who are in their seats, let's pray together. In the name of Jesus, Father, there are those standing here that need a move of God. There's need a revival, oh Father. There's some who are standing here, are asleep, and they need to wake. There's some who need to arise so that Christ can give them light. And ask in the name of Jesus, Father, tonight, that you will breathe fresh life. Fresh life. Even as the Spirit of God is speaking to you, he's saying, awake, awake, arise. You do what you need to do, and the Spirit of God will do the rest. As you call out upon the name of the Lord, oh God, breathe fresh life into your people. Breathe life in the name of Jesus. Break every barrier. Break every barrier. Break every barrier in the name of Jesus. I speak to every day thing and I say come alive now in the name of Jesus. Everything that's stagnant in the name of Jesus. I declare breaking of every plan and plot of the enemy to keep you down and to keep you in a place where you're distracted and to keep you in a place where you're not striving forward. I break every assignment of hell concerning you in the name of Jesus and I speak life. I speak life. I speak strength in the name of Jesus. Oh my God. I declare that you will come upon your people in power. Holy Spirit, I ask that the life of God, the light of God will shine upon them tonight. And if you're online, you can pray this prayer. If you're online, you can breathe this prayer with me. Ask God to break into your circumstance. Ask God to let light shine upon you. You do your part. Arise in the name of Jesus. Awake, you who sleep. Awake you who sleep. Arise from the dead. Christ will give you light. I declare light. I declare life. I declare strength. I declare grace. I declare power. I declare greater grace upon you. Holy Ghost power. I declare an infusion of power in the name of Jesus upon every person standing here. My God, arise in their circumstance. Arise in their situation in the name of Jesus. Break down every wall. Break down every wall. In Jesus' name, I declare greater grace. I declare blessings. I declare favor. I declare strong anointing upon you. In Jesus' name, as God works upon you to breathe fresh life. Fresh life. Fresh life. Thank you, Father. I thank you, God, that tonight something powerful is taking place in their spirits. They will not return to how it used to be. Some may have to repent of the wrong they have done, the life they were living. Some may have to say, God, I'm sorry for how I was acting. Sorry for my state of rebellion. 
Then all of us have to ask God to come and breathe life. May the life and the light of God come upon you and breathe freshness in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you. God bless you. Hallelujah. Yeah, we got the worship team singing song. I'm going to turn back over to, to Pastor. Thank you, Father. God, I ask even now that you would touch everybody here. Touch those who are online. Minister to them, God. Lord, for any who is sick, I speak healing. Any who needs a touch from God, I declare, receive it now. And I thank you, my God, for all that you would do in this place and in their lives. Be healed in Jesus' name. Be strengthened in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. I declare fresh life to flow in your physical body to break every sickness and to turn your situation around receive now and I thank you God when the Amen. glory comes there'll be no words to say
Kabadaraba, Sikabadaraba, Sikabaya Kabadaraba, Ye Kabandaraba, Sakabandi, Mikabayandaraba, Sakayandaraba, Ye Kabandaraba, Sikaya Handaraba, Sakaya Handaraba, Ye Daraba Kabadurubo, Sikabandaraba, Ye Daraba, Sakabayandaraba, Ye Kabayandaraba, Ye Kabayandaraba, Sakabandi, Mikabandaraba. to sow into. The ashes will be given envelopes online. The instructions that they are how to give. If you follow those instructions, once you've heard the word of God, it's important that you sow into that particular word. So the instructions are on the screen there. Remember the Lord loves a cheerful giver. This is a good time to be cheerful in your giving. You make your checks fair to FCI. You can give by credit or debit card. You can also give by cash. God bless each one of us as we give in his house. The Lord bless and increase you. Whenever you are ready, when you are ready, stand. I'm not going to rush you. This is very important as well, part of our service and our worship to God, our response to the word. So whenever you're ready, won't you please rise and so that we can figure out when we can invite you to come forward. The ashes will be leading you. Those online, like I've said already, God bless you. Even if she shared in the word, you could also share in your giving into this word. God bless you. You want to rise with me? If you're ready. Let's come rejoicing. The Lord is setting you and I up for a promotion. God bless you as you come. Offering time is blessing time. Amen.
Hallelujah. You know, God is the God of increase and he always takes us from glory to glory and grace to grace. God willing, tomorrow we're still, oh hallelujah, we're still in a week of prayer and fasting. In case you've forgotten, yeah? You've forgotten the fasting bit. <laughs> so we're still fasting. So tomorrow is a day of fasting. So if you're doing wake up to six, continue. If you're doing fruit and veg, continue. And tomorrow, God willing, we'll be on the prayer line at 7 a.m. Between 7 a.m. to half past seven. And we'll be on the prayer line at 12 noon for half an hour. Those of you who are at work, orchestrate your um, lunch break so that at 12, you can be on the prayer line. It's a time of prayer and fasting. And God willing, all roads lead to where? To well in. Tomorrow. You heard this. You know, tomorrow is going to be wah, 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 wah. If you're online, thank you so much for joining us. You're a member of FCI. Tomorrow you must be in the house. Pastor always tells us about synergy, you know. You can't get that online. So come in tomorrow. Come on time and be expectant. Tomorrow the Lord has a word for you. Those who are abroad, God bless you. We'll have the pleasure of your company again tomorrow, God willing. You can join us on the prayer line. Amen and amen. Let me tell you something. Why don't you just commit yourself into God's hand? You know, um, apostles spoken to us. We, some of us are going to have dreams, encounters. Some of us will be flying in the air. Some of us will, from where we come from, when you hear somebody's flying, you think of the other, uh, 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 uh. You'll be projected into different realms. Commit yourself into God's hand and also speak into tomorrow. Prophesy into tomorrow because the Lord doors have opened and so may tomorrow bring you great news. Amen. May it bring you great news. And when we come back again, you would be in the realm. You're not going to be waiting for the prayer leader or anybody to project you into that, uh, that environment or into that space. God bless each one of us. And God reward you for your commitment to the things of God. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May he make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. May the Lord turn his face towards you and show you grace, mercy, and favor. May every single thing you put your hand to do prosper. And now let us share the grace together. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the sweet fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us now and forevermore. Amen. Look at somebody in the eye and then say, and surely goodness and mercy shall follow us all the days of our lives. And we and our children to a thousand generations shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever and ever. Amen. Say to your neighbor, see you tomorrow. Tell your neighbor, don't come alone. Bring somebody. God bless you all. Shalom, shalom. Our mission is the raising overcomers, setting captives free. Freedom Center International is here to support you in every step that you take as you seek spiritual and emotional wholeness in your study of God's Word. We hope you've been blessed by today's message. Worship with us at 38 Upper Wickham Lane, Welling, Kent, DA16 3HF or at an FCI church near you. For prayer or counselling, give us a call on 0207 277 8700. To find out more about FCI, visit our website fcichapel.org. Always remember, there's progress in freedom.